struggling in antistasi. NATO gunning you down at every turn, in every attack. Are the AFRF dominating the map with their overwhelming firepower? Unable to get a foothold in the land to build upon and liberate the island? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how I liberated Altis without firing a bullet or getting a single kill. And I know what you're thinking. This must be BS. You can't possibly do that. Right? I've already liberated Noah, only using AI, which you can see in this video right here. And I'm going to be taking this a step further, making it even more difficult and liberating Altis too. Unlike last time, I'm not going to be giving myself unlimited HR and money. Yep, that's right. In this video series, I'm going to take you from struggling with the weak, inaccurate and downright stupid AI in the beginning all the way to the victory screen. And once again, our journey begins by liberating the nearby towns and obtaining better weapons and armor in the process. For this task, I will be utilizing AI and AI only, letting them take care of the military police and conquer the map, hopefully without too many losses. We began by recruiting two squads of infantry, both with four units and a truck, costing a little over 1,000 euros and eight HR. Our limited HR and money would be quite a challenge to overcome, so capturing towns and resources as quickly as possible would be crucial to our success. I gave orders to the forces to move on the first town and then jumping into the spectator tool, quickly making contact with the military police forces, our AI engaged and eliminated four squads with two MPs each in the town. As our AI were still very untrained and had no armor or decent weapons, this took quite a while to complete. I have been fighting for 30 minutes! Our AI continued to advance and eventually took out the last of the MPs. This allowed our forces to temporarily occupy the town, as I quickly moved in and grabbed whatever I could. Gathering all the gear possible would be crucial to the cause, allowing us to improve our AI's lethality and survivability. After retreating my AI to regroup and returning to base with all the gear we secured in the attack, I decided to check out how many armored vests we had secured in that initial assault. Already over halfway to unlocking them for our units only needing 25. So I think I'm gonna relog. Um I think I need to as our HQ is actually a little too close to this town right beside us. That uh that prevents the MPs from actually respawning. And I don't get good quests to allow us to secure it, so um like that town. So yeah, just, just relogging to to reset our quests and, and get the MPs to spawn back, yeah. Okay, yeah, let's see how it goes. After relogging, our attacks continued as I was tasked with delivering supplies to the locals in a nearby town that would allow us to generate a ton of extra support for the cause that would contribute to us eventually converting the first town to the cause. So our attack is ongoing and it's one of those attacks that tend to be kind of slow. Um, like our AI have to slowly make their way to the outskirts and then through the town, all the while getting attacked by the NPs, which, is, which really does slow them down even more. So yeah, let's um, just keep watching and see how this goes. They'll eventually get there, hopefully. As the fighting continued deep throughout the streets, we slowly began to overwhelm the enemy and began to overpower them. With each MP taken out, our control of this area slightly increased, and so I decided to make a move 
with the supplies to begin distributing the leaflets and propaganda to the locals. Did you see running around like a headless chicken, holy? Ah, he just lost his, lost his helmet. Attacking. Tracking through the walls and stuff. Like, like we outnumber him like 20 to 1, so I can't imagine we lose this. Alright, let's come on out here and see what um what's going on. Oh, this is the this is that guy. Ah, oh, he surrendered. Awesome. Once again, after our AI had secured the town and delivered the supplies to the locals, we regrouped at base, and while preparing to relog, we received that all important notification that the first town had joined our little rebellion. This resulted in us getting extra HR every tick and a little bit more cash too. So I want to move on the resources next, but I don't quite have enough uh, HR or money. So I'm just going to sit here now that we have the next town, this town, um, just convert that town. We're going to slowly generate more. So I'm just going to sit here AFK for about, I'm thinking about two hours, uh, real life. <laughs> and we'll come back once we have uh, that done. With the first town converted to the cause, and while we still had a good chunk of HR and money not spent, I decided that it would be best to begin an attack on what is probably the easiest resource to capture in Altus. Beginning by recruiting 4 squads of infantry totaling 36 units and issuing them orders to move towards the resources, this would be a very crucial attack for the success of the rebellion and my ability to complete the task of liberating Altus without killing any AI myself. So I'm going to split the squads into two and attack from basically from both sides most of the forces are getting close to the resource now and, and they will probably make contact with them any second so i think i just have to reissue orders um to just set the final target and, and just watch from now on okay cool as i watched the advance our forces on the left flank engaged the defenses of the resource there were a few squads of units patrolling the area and were the first to engage our forces. Calling out targets and quickly reacting to the assault, we lost a lot of momentum on the attack for a short while as the perimeter defences were dealt with. Our advance continued and our forces quickly made their way into the resources with only a few soldiers left to take out. However, these last few units proved to be most lethal, leaving a pile of bodies in their wake and decimating our forces. Finally, after glitching through a wall and taking out the last LMG unit, who was the primary cause of our excessive losses, we had secured the second resources, so I gathered all the gear in the area and captured the resources. So something I'm not sure I've done, but I want to just talk about HR for the moment. Um, we are just after capturing our first resources and the town nearby and we're making about 280 euro and h or three hr per tick um so it's fairly good for now but it should suffice keep us going uh so yeah i'm going to focus on converting as many towns as possible and then i'll move on and change my focus to being gathering resources uh or capturing resources to get money we i think a good area to like focus on to begin with uh, before we try and take on uh, military bases or outposts is like 20 HR per tick and about two and a half thousand euros uh, maybe even more might be less sad well we'll see with a decent foothold on Altus secured our sights set back on freeing the local towns from the tyranny of the MPEs and NATO's occupation after securing the town of Neri NATO sent a squad in a Humvee to try and repel our attack but to no avail 
we overpowered them, outnumbering them by about 3 to 1. Eventually, after overpowering NATO, our sights set on the towns to the east. Focusing on Zaros to begin with, a battle began for the military admin in the town. At the same time as the MPs were all focused on the fight for the admin, I began to distribute leaflets and propaganda to the locals. Together with the domination of our forces over NATO in the fight for the admin and the distribution of the leaflets, the town of Zorus quickly changed their allegiance. Unfortunately, right after this I lost some footage as it got corrupted, but essentially we fought and defeated the MPs in the towns to the east grabbed all that we could and continued liberating even more towns, enabling us to have a decent steady income of HR. However, our income of money was lacking, so next I fixed that. So my plan, I'm going to start by taking on the MPs in the neighbor town and hopefully get a decent supply uh, supplies quest. Then once I've taken them out, um, I think by size, I'll turn on, focus on the resources in the north. North, um, we'll hopefully take it on and be able to have enough forces to defeat it, no problem. And finally, once I've captured that, I'm, I think I'm going to head back west towards the two resources near Kavala. As our attack on the resources began with all our forces moving in from one direction in an attempt to overpower the defences and push quickly through. However, once again, we suffered many losses with the lacklustre performance from our AI. At this point, I really noticed I really needed to improve their training level, but costing 6,000 euro? I decided to wait on this for now. Due to many losses sustained during this attack, I decided that it would be a good idea to send in another two squads of units, providing the necessary boost to my AI's attacking prowess to eventually overpower the last of the AI and secure their resources. As our AI finished off the last defensive forces, I moved in with my trusty loot crate to gather all the gear I could and then capture the resources. As I mentioned earlier, after securing these resources, our sights turned to the other two resources near Kavala. And so, our foothold on the island, territory now liberated, Rue.
During the second attack, I actually utilized the Commander menu to recruit a HMG car. As we had now achieved War Level 3, this was now possible and would prove to be quite useful going forward. In my previous attempt at this, I preferred to use the Arms Dealer to purchase APCs, but due to the limited resources available, I opted to use HMG cars for now instead, as they were cheaper. Along with unlocking new vehicles, an Arms Dealer came to Altus, located on top of a mountain deep within an enemy territory. I went up to meet this guy, but for some reason he didn't actually have any vehicles for sale yet. So we have unlocked quite a few new pieces of gear now. Uh, yeah, so I've been gathering, just slowly gathering them over time. And now we have some new high tier armor that the, the, uh, the NATO use mainly. And then boars with GLs. So yeah, I'm not actually sure that the AI can use the, the GLs, the green launchers very effectively, but <laughs> I guess we'll see. Given my current position deep within enemy territory, I decided that this would be a good time to make an insurgence even deeper and secure an even stronger income. Heading towards the two resources in the northwest of the island, temporarily relocating our HQ, our insurgence began. Sending multiple squads of units and even a HMG car We made quick work of the defenses. Sniper, 200 meters. Soldier, 100 meters, front. We got a man down. And in no time at all, secured the first resource. With one secure, our sights turned to the second, and in the blink of an eye, the second was also now secure. So our plans for world domination, <clears throat> uh, liberation, liberation of the people of Altus uh, are going quite smoothly now. We've got a good foothold on the island now. I think we can take some more risks. So um, my thought process here is the counterattack that NATO will send once we capture anything bigger, like an outpost or a factory, will be actually significant, like maybe they'll send a helicopter, an APC or a tank. Um, and in that case, we can actually lose the fight um, by not being able to, to hold them back from actually getting to the outpost or getting to the factory. So I think I will need, uh, I think I have a decent enough economy now that I should be able to repel their first attacks. I don't think it'll be something as small as age and uh, um, a Humvee or anything like that. I think it'll probably be an APC or a tank and maybe a helicopter. So I think we're strong enough. We have good enough um, base ground built to, to, to do that now. So yeah. With my next goal in mind, the Southern Factory, I began to prepare for the counterattack NATO would send once I had captured it. Expecting any counterattacking forces to stick to the road, I set up a roadblock and recruited a vehicle squad and assigned them an AT car. Then recruiting a bunch of infantry and two HMG cars, our attack on the factory began. The infantry closed in on the factory and were engaged by the perimeter defenses. Sniper, 200 meters just up ahead. AT soldier, 200 meters front. Two, attack that AT soldier north. Man. Holding back our HMG cars for the time being to prevent them from rushing in too fast, our infantry made quick work of the forward perimeter guards. Are HMG cars actually useless in this fight? With one driving off into the hills further away as soon as I give them orders from where they were originally positioned and the other moving to the other side of the factory near the outpost and getting decimated by the four HMGs defending it and a roadblock. So, our infantry were basically on their own, but they were able to handle it. With the last of the infantry guarding the factory taken out, I moved all our units back towards the roadblock, gathered all the gear in the area, loading it into a truck, and then captured the flag.
This triggered the counterattack, with NATO sending an APC with an LMG. A roadblock was as prepared as they could be, as the APC advanced along the path we predicted and eventually engaged our AI. Quickly taken out the wheels of the APC with our infantry's GLs, we had immobilized it. Our AT car began engaging it as NATO called for backup. Slowly wearing it down, we were able to destroy it, but the fight was not over yet. With another APC on the way, I recruited two more AT cars, assigning them to vehicle squads. Positioned them and waited for NATO's backup to arrive. This APC actually made it much further and dealt a lot more damage to our AI, taking out the HMG, multiple infantry and even one of the AT cars. But slowly we disabled it, wore it down and destroyed it too. This first factory would help generate a bunch more income for the rebellion, allowing us to construct fortifications and reducing the cost of purchasing new vehicles. However, capturing other factories would boost our income even further. So. Our site set on the factory near the town of Agios Dionysus, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. However, before launching this assault, I wanted to boost our AI's capability. Given our recent newfound financial gain, I increased the AI's capabilities to level 8. Setting up for this assault, recruiting four squads of infantry and a HMG car, issuing orders for them to move on the factory, our units quickly advanced and began to engage the enemy forces. To begin with, our HMG car was kind of useless as our infantry advanced, but eventually joining the fight, this guy single-handedly decimated the enemy forces, taking out squad after squad. Slowly getting the upper hand and overwhelming NATO, the factory was secured. Gathering all the loose loot around and then recruiting two vehicle squads, again assigning each of them an AT car, we set up in ambush, waiting for the counterattack. And our forces kind of obliterated the APC that was sent to retake the outpost uh, with 20 AI, um, all firing grenade launchers, you know, spamming the grenade launchers at the APC, disabling it very quickly, and our AT car is dealing heavy damage to the APC at the same time. It was basically destroyed in no time at all. If you got this far, I just want to say thank you and um, I appreciate it. Now, if you wouldn't mind, just throw me a, a like maybe subscribe if you enjoy this content and if you want to help boost this um, video and, and help me and my channel grow leave a comment down below and um, the more you interact the better so thank you so much for watching this series will continue in the next video where i continue the liberation of altus and eventually hopefully securing the entire island however that may take a couple more videos anyway thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next one